So this is Matt, and welcome to the shop. Uh, for those who have been following my progress here, uh, I've been pretty busy lately with some other projects, so a little slower than I would, would have hoped for, but i uh, made a little progress here. Uh, sorry I didn't get to record it because I was kind of rushing just to get this done, but uh, this is the oil plug I mentioned I was going to have to make. Uh, the guy said he may be able to find the old one, but I already got this made because uh, I really kind of need it right now. So, uh, there it is. Uh, got it all in position. I think I showed that in the last video. Uh, I've got so the BFD drives in. One of them's going to change it because I'm not satisfied with one of them. But I've got a temporary setup here. I've got I'm functional at this point. It's certainly not how I'm going to have this set up in the long term. Uh, but enough to see how things are running. Uh, I've got my feeds going now with the, the VFD drives. I've got the rest of the tools came in. I think I mentioned before that the guy got a few of the tools. Uh, they're here now. Uh, I did do a little modification on the spindle here. Uh, when I bought this, he told me that this was a Cat 50 uh, spindle in here, uh, which is incorrect. Uh, now I forget, MT something? I, I gotta look that up. I'll come back with that. Uh, but this is specific to. Well, not specific, there are other machines that use it, but the Cincinnati's, I think, primarily use this. Uh, and I, like I said, I'll come back with the name of that. Uh, but it is not CAT-50. Uh, the taper is the same as CAT-50. Uh, but the, the end of it is different, and, and the dogs here that attaches, and I'm going to show a detail of that. So the first thing I had to do was a slight modification to the spindle here uh, on the overhead. And what that was about is the when I bought this, the guy that sold it to me told me that the spindles were Cat 50, uh, which this is Cat 50 that's in here. Uh, it, but uh, reality is this was not Cat 50. Uh, the Cincinnati's and a lot of the older machines uh, used MNTB50. Now the taper is the same, uh, but there is differences in the flange here. This is the original MNTB50, uh, and if, one thing you can see: there's no groove on here, uh, and on the back there's this little extension on the back which your cat 50 this one's a cat 50 it does not have the extension and you've got this groove here uh, well the groove is used for uh, CNC machines that do auto change of the tooling uh, it's not necessary on a machine like this where you, you know it's everything's manual uh, and it, that that doesn't cause a problem. The tail can uh, because it shortens it up. Um, now with the Cincinnati, it can accommodate the shorter tail because the way they did the drawer bars on these, uh, they used two nuts. You got the one on the end to turn the drawer bar, but rather than just seating against the back, you've got a second nut that seats. And this has quite a bit of adjustment range. So when you're running a Cat 50, you can bring it near the top and it will uh, it have enough threads engaged to work with the Cat 50. When you're using the MNTB, then you bring this down to a position more like I have it now, uh, which brings the drawer bar up to still accommodate the pull but get the threads engaged, uh, which it's about an inch and a quarter, I believe, difference on them. The taper, is the same so there's no issues there all the dimensions there and here are the same now the real problem 
has to do with these engagement slots where the dogs engage to, tur to turn it. Um, on the original MNTB, these slots are cut so that they are the same diameter as the end of the taper, the, the big end of the taper, on both sides. They're, they're identical on both sides on the depth. On CAT 50, because these are done for CNC and, you know, they've got, uh, you know, more precise requirements with it. Uh, for one thing, they wanted the tools to have a specific orientation when they're inserted. Uh, so say you're using a boring bar or something like that, that the point comes out on one side of it. Uh, that can be guaranteed when it's inserted. Uh, by making this so it only goes into the spindle in one direction. So how they did that, you've got one of these slots is cut original, is similar to the original NMTB. It's flush with the end of the taper. But on the opposite side here, it sticks up. It's about 80 thousandths further out than the taper is, or roughly two millimeter. Uh, so if you try and insert one of these in an MNTB uh, taper without any modification, it bumps up against the dog and it won't insert all the way. Uh, well, then I'll show that right now. This one hasn't been modified. So that comes up and you can see that hits on the top of the dog. One side will have enough clearance, so if you get it centered in there right, but the other side clearly hits. There's just not enough room. Whereas if we take the original MNTB, I can take this in here, and that seats all the way down there. That's fully seated at that point. You, of course, no drawer bar, but you get the idea. So what I ended up doing is I took one of these dogs out, I removed it, and I machined the inner face of this. I took off 80 thousandths off the face of it and then re-champered everything and reinstalled it. So now it accepts CAT50 just as good as it does the MNTB. And this doesn't damage it for MNTB because the 80 thousandths still leaves plenty of clearance of uh, engagement on here. Uh, it's not going to weaken it in any notable manner. Uh, plus the other side is original. So it, that's been completed. I did that. Uh, I didn't show that. Uh, I just wanted to get it done. I kind of needed this because I needed my uh, ER32 adapter functional so that I could do any projects further from this. Uh, the other thing that needed to be done is I got my VFD drives in. I mentioned these are coming before. So we've got, this one is for the knee, uh, this one is for the overarm, uh, the, the vertical, and this one is for the horizontal. Uh, now this one for the vertical, I'm going to be changing this. I'm not satisfied with it. Uh, it's a really cheap inverter. When I bought this, uh, this was not what the guy was showing on the site. I basically I got ripped off on this. Uh, I did get a little refund from the guy after I brought it to his attention that it was not right. Uh, but when I bought it, uh, I thought I was buying one uh, like this that I used on my uh, my home built mill. Now this is a good inverter. Uh, it's run great for over a year. Uh, it, the performance of it is good. Uh, this one's only two horsepower. The other one is uh, for three horsepower. But I thought I was buying one like this in the three horsepower version. Uh, and instead I got this. And I, I'm familiar with this because I looked this up on eBay a couple of years ago when I bought the old one. Uh, and I know this is a piece of junk. The reviews on this were very poor. And having run it a little bit, I have to agree. It, uh, it runs, it'll, it'll push the three horsepower, at least I believe it does. Uh, 
but it has no fault tolerance at all. It has no overload capability. Uh, as soon as you exceed the horsepower, it just it, it trips and it shuts down. Uh, whereas this one, this is a, a fairly decent inverter and it has overload protection on it. It, it doesn't just shut it down, it, it, it handles it. Uh, when you overload the motor, what it will do is it will drop the RPM and it will limit the current so it doesn't hurt the inverter. And as soon as the load is relieved a little bit, the RPM will rise back up to what it should be and it continues to run as it should. Uh, this cheap one cannot do that. As soon as, as soon as you get an overload situation, it just shuts down. Uh, now, on a mill like this, they didn't have inverters back then. And this was designed just to run off straight three-phase. Well, an electric motor doesn't have a problem with a temporary overload uh, of, say, 150% for 30 seconds, uh, it's not going to hurt it in the least. Uh, I mean, obviously, you don't want to go full locked rotor and hold it, but 150%, not going to hurt it unless you let it run like that continuously. So it, the way they design the machine, you have certain operations that are limited in time may overload the motors uh, temporarily. On the spindle here, if you have it set for the highest speed of 2000 rpm and you engage the clutch quickly it temporarily goes to overload till it picks up speed uh, the what happens on the knee motor uh, is it'll do most of the operations okay but if you go to lift the knee and you're using the rapids it just it draws too much horsepower and that goes into overload. Uh, now, if the motor is running full speed and you're lifting the knee, you're not going to run it for more than 30 seconds to get it from the bottom to the top. That's about all it takes to get from the lowest position to the highest position when you're using the rapids. So that overload in short term like that is not a problem for the motor. But for a cheap inverter, it's a problem. Uh, so I need to upgrade this to a better one. And actually, when I bought this, I had bought two of them. I had one over here for the knee motor. Uh, and I ended up, because that one was the most immediate problem, uh, I bought this much better unit and I moved this one, which is an okay unit that I was originally using for the horizontal motor. Uh, and I put that one on the knee. It worked. This has plenty of power to run the knee okay. And I put the, the better unit on the horizontal. Uh, so now I've ordered another unit like this, only smaller horsepower. This is 7.5 uh, kilowatt, uh, capable 10 horsepower. The one that's going to replace this is going to be 4 kilowatt, capable of five horsepower. The motor is only three, so I've got plenty of headroom for overload, uh, plus the inverter is designed to handle overload it, it's compared to this one. So yeah, that's a lot of what's going on right now. And you know, this is temporary setup just to get up and running. I, I am fully functional at this point, uh, and I think we're actually gonna do a small project here right off. Uh, but this is all going to get installed. All three of these, it's going to be tight fit, but I'm going to get them up in this cabinet up here. All that's going to get stripped out. Uh, I've got a power fan that I'm going to be putting in there for ventilation uh, because the box is too small to do it uh, without ventilation. They would overheat if I just closed them up. Uh, so we're going to put some holes in the bottom uh, to allow air to come in and then we're going to vent out with it with a good power fan. But down here, this is mostly going to be empty by the time I get done in here. There'll be some electrical wires running through. Uh, I may have a contact strip down there just for junctions. 
And I, I am going to keep this diffuse holders and the cutoff switch. This is the, uh, the main cutoff switch. So that's going to stay. The rest of this probably going to go. Uh, well, the switch here will stay. That is the uh, determines if the clutch is engaged or not. It has to do with some of the logic. So that has to stay. So anyways, uh, that's about where I'm at as far as the mill itself goes, and uh, I'm going to progress, we're going to start a project. If you've made it this far, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and found it entertaining or educational. If so, please consider hitting like or subscribe. It does help give me incentive to continue producing more. Thank you.